So here they have a table of stronger earthquakes in the surrounding area. Like I said, they didn't have a Richter scale developed until 1935, um, or didn't invent it until then. So we got 1915, 1925, 1935, 1947, and 1959. Here it says, um, not yet determined, but probably a magnitude 10. Um, I believe they said it was a 7.1, but it just shows you how they downgrade the earthquakes. And it has another list of earthquakes, 1871, um, August 19th. 1915, uh, May 8th, 1925, June 27th, and it gives a list of some of the things that people felt. Uh, 1925, felt throughout the park, building damaged at Gardner. Okay, um, there was another one on December 6th. Okay, 1926, July 31st. Ranger Station, felt by many. Windows rattled, pictures um, disarranged, dishes and groceries disturbed, um, surface sound. Yeah, things were probably knocked off the shelf. Gave an intensity level of 4. You can see in that one's 2, but these other ones, other than this one, was an intensity level 5 in 1915. Alright, so then we'll come down a little bit. Um... Let's see, this one had been 1926, I believe. Then they don't give a year, but I'm just guessing. Then we got 1930, um, Snake River Ranger Station. They had three shocks. North end of Yellowstone Park, uh, Norris Junction, uh, Snake River uh, Ranger Station. Uh, let's see. Um, 1931, Lewis Lake, Southgate, everyone was woken up. 1933, West Yellowstone, Slight Shock, Awakened a Few. 1934, now, that one's where the pendulum clock stopped and small objects moved, question mark. Mammoth. Okay, 1935. Um, now this is the Lake Hotel that I was talking about when it was built. Um, they had cracked plaster. Free swinging doors would not close. Um, south entrance cracks to brick chimneys for several feet and moves small objects. Rock beds at Moran, Wyoming. Not felt in Jackson, Wyoming. Um, intensity level 5, later raised to intensity level 6. So that would have been January 14th, 1935. But then it's got 36 down here. And all kinds of stuff. Let's see. If we get intensity level. Okay, 1940. West Thumb. Um, intensity level 5. Okay, and that's the old caldera, which is right there. And this was formed about 150,000 years ago uh, when it erupted and blew it all out. It was probably 11 times stronger than the eruption of Krakatoa Volcano. So I don't have a magnitude level for the earthquake that occurred in 1940. But it could have been a magnitude 3.5 or 4.0, maybe even lar larger. February 3rd of 1943, Old Faithful, all awakened, houses creaked, windows rattled, six different quakes felt between 5.15 and 9.30 a.m. The severest was at 9.15 a.m., it says. Then, October 2nd, 1944, there was a series of earthquakes. Three distinct tremors felt, first at 8.27 p.m., was weak. The second, immediately following, was strong enough to rattle dishes and swing suspended objects in a southeast direction. The third, at 8.36 p.m., was slight. Three persons at the station in two separate buildings felt these shocks. 
The purse at 8.27 p.m. appeared slow, followed immediately by a rapid shaking of the building. The first two shocks were felt by several persons at Flag Ranch. Um, that is to the south of Yellowstone. Uh, two miles south of this station, the third shock was felt by at least three persons at Flag Ranch. Frightened all in the station. And they probably ran outside. At Moran, it was felt with abrupt east-west swing, dislodged canned goods flew off the shelves. Subterranean sound was heard by several. Hanging objects swung. Building swayed slightly. Shock was reported to observer from 14 miles west and also 12 miles east of Moran. April 21st, and again, I believe this is 1944, Canyon and Yellowstone Lake felt by several, by some outdoors, houses, creek, trees, and bushes, slightly shaken, overturned bases, and small objects, no damage to buildings. Then we got the series of earthquakes in 1947, where the old-timers said it was the strongest one that they had ever felt. Gasoline lamps hanging on hooks from ceilings swayed east to west. Uh, they do have, I'm going to have to look this up. All right, so let's go to the location, if I can, of the next earthquake that's being reported somewhere in this location. It doesn't give exact, just 44 north by uh, 110 west. Let's bring this out. So it would be um, slightly um, east, southeast of Yellowstone Lake. I believe it's 1950. West Yellowstone, Montana, felt by many, many tourists ran from buildings. Small objects shifted. Knickknacks fell and some grocery stock fell. Also felt by observers at Mary Lake. Patrol cabin were windows and dishes rattled and frame building creaked other mild shocks and it gives a time uh, 15 15 15 20 15 30 uh, 21 15 and 2200 so the earliest earthquake that's posted on this page is in 1871 and the earliest report of damage was in 1925 here it says felt throughout the park building damage at Gardner, Montana. Here's the report. I believe it's 1891 about the geysers. I'll give you a link to this. Um, and it talks about Old Faithful. Back then, it didn't erupt every 90 minutes. It erupted every 65 minutes and has never disappointed the observer or skipped a display on time since it was first discovered. And I believe it's talking about cinder cone. Um, it talks here. It says a small opening 25 feet away, which sends up a thin spurt of steam for half an hour previous to every eruption. It sends a straight column of water over 200 feet high. And it, and its particular cone shaped crater gives a round and the clearest shape to its ascending column of water. That one back then used to erupt um, every 25 hours for the past three days. Um, but it is indicative during the period preceding 10 days. And it also talks about splendid, giant and giantness, uh, the turbine and the grand and the lion and the lioness um, geysers. Interesting too, it says we see and smell the brimstone. And we behold the wonderful results of the fire. So they see and smell the brimstone. I thought that was interesting. Um, that the lake of fire and the brimstone is beneath us. There is no question, however, we may disagree on this point as to whether man's eternal punishment finds lodgment in so literal of an adaptation of things real and terrestrial. And they evidently took a trip down the Snake River Plateau. Talk about Hell's Half Acre. And I found some interesting information about that too. I know, bear with me. But for those like me, 
who find this all interesting, I think you would like to know this because so much is not told to us. So here we have um, several um, lava flows that I drew out. And evidently, craters of the moon erupted only 2,000 years ago. I'll give you a link to this article too. Yeah, here I thought it was um, 10,000 years ago because the Native Americans talk about the eruption, but evidently there was the last eruption was only 2,000 years ago. This document comes from USGS and it says Craters of the Moon is one of the youngest volcanic areas in Idaho and may be the most likely in the state to erupt again over the past 15,000 years. Eruptions at Craters of the Moon have occurred about every 3,000 and 3,000 years. And so the next eruption might be expected sometime in the next 1,000 years. And this was published February 4th of 2019 by USGS, by the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Yeah, so they're expecting this area, Craters of the Moon, to erupt again. And they keep telling you there's nothing to worry about. Well, with all the recent activity, uh, yeah. Okay, here we got Hell's Half Acre. That's another interesting hotspot. Uh, vocalism attributed to the hotspot being approximately uh, 15 million years old. The western portion of the plain with lava fields becoming younger to the east with lava eruption approximately uh, 4,100 years ago. Hell, Hell's Half Acre is one of the youngest lava fields. Um, with lavas erupting, let me make this brighter, approximately 4,100 years ago. Um, Hell's Half Acre is one of the youngest lava fields. Well, actually, they know now that it's not. Well, maybe for when it was first created. And I'll give you a link to this uh, research paper, too. So, what did we learn today? We learned that only 2,000 years ago, they had lava flowing. And there was large earthquakes that they don't tell us about. Mostly because, uh, yeah, they didn't have the Richter scale established. Things like that. Can you imagine a 6.1 when the 1959 one was a 7.2? And the population and the tourists were um, a lot less than what they have now. Yeah, I wonder how strong that 1871 earthquake was. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And as always, be prepared, have a plan, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.